Rome was indeed the greatest power of its time. And on the surface, it seemed to run like clockwork. Its military was lauded, wealth piled high, its leaders the embodiment of poise, prestige and high culture. Nation after nation fell to Rome from its time as a kingdom, throughout its centuries as a republic, and then later as an empire. But the jewel of Europe had a dank and dark underbelly, plagued by poverty and a general disdain for the lower socio-economic class of citizens. The powerful would flaunt their military power and wealth, enjoying triumphs and eternal praise in the history books, while the poor and forgotten feared to even walk the streets at night. So here I'm going to take you on a brief history tour of this underbelly, specifically a history of those appointed to safeguard it. Now they weren't all heroes and at times could be villains themselves, but rarely in our poems and history books do we get a chance to see the police, the firefighters, the medics, who dedicated, whether voluntarily or not, themselves to make Rome a safer place to live. We'll start with the character of Socia in the Roman author Plautus' play Amphitryon, who is walking the moonlit streets of Thebes in a play clearly intended to mirror Rome. He says to himself, Qui me alter restaudacior homo aut qui confidentior, juventutis mores quisciam, qui hoc noctes solus ambulem, quid faciam nunc sit resuiri me in carcerem compegerint. What man is bolder or more daring than me, who knows the habits of young men who walk alone this night? What will I do if the three watchmen take me to jail? The tres viri he refers to were established in the middle years of the Republic around 290 BCE. These tres viri nocturni, the three men of the night, were magistrates originally positioned to combat dangerous fires that would flare up around the city of Rome. Three magistrates operated with a team of slaves, and over time their duties extended to policing as well. The problem was, they weren't particularly effective at firefighting, tended to be particularly brutal when policing, and were liable to be bought off by the wealthy with an agenda. Fires remained a problem, and crime remained a bigger one. This is when Augustus decided to make the fire and crime-fighting force a public one, ordered and slightly more incorruptible. Enter the Wigilaires, or Vigilis. Equipped with everything ranging from little buckets to ballistae, they patrolled the streets ready to combat fire wherever it could be found. They had light weapons to subdue petty criminals, and medics on hand to accompany them. Augustus even gave them a military organisation with seven cohorts of seven centuries totalling 7,000 men in all, commanded by a prefect of tribunal rank, the Praefectus Vigilum, Prefect of the Watch. But what about the more serious crimes? Smaller scale ones like thieves, robbers, public indecency, these were the remits of the Vigilis. But Rome was no stranger to far more turbulent unrest in the ranks of the disadvantaged. In the later years of the Republic, gang warfare became a huge problem. Some of the most famous gang leaders were Titus Milo and Publius Clodius, but even when Pompey the Great cleaned up the streets and Cicero successfully indicted them in court, mobs and rioters would still pop up in protest against the status quo. This is when the next level of the police come in, the urban cohort, a favourite of any total war players out there. The cohortes urbani were essentially the military police of Rome, and the centurions of the Vigilis would see getting into this force a worthy promotion. They were formed under Augustus for two key reasons. The first was, as mentioned before, to act as a real military force against the power of Roman gangs. The second I will reveal soon. Now, the urban cohort at its inception consisted of 1,500 men, six centurions and one tribune in power. They joined the vigilies on the streets, but instead of buckets and ballistae, they acted as true legionaries, fully armed and armoured to tackle even the most dangerous of riots. Instead of slaves, they were free men, and earned even more than regular soldiers. They were not the most elite units in Rome, as Total War would have us believe, but were nevertheless a mean fighting force. And that takes us to the highest rank of law and order, and the second reason that the urban cohort was formed. From Vigiles to Cohortes Urbani to, at the very top, the Cohortes Praetoriae, the Praetorian Guard. 
From the Republic to Empire, these soldiers protected the most powerful in society, from senators to emperors. Augustus inevitably made some changes. Their power was enormous even then, so by creating the urban cohort to defend the streets, then appointing the Praetorians to become his personal bodyguards, he could keep a closer eye on them. This kept them in check during his time as Emperor, but as we know, they leveraged this proximity to the Emperor in later years of the Empire to appoint and dethrone them with their influence alone. Now, their duties didn't stop a protection though. They upheld the constitution of Rome. While Vigilis dealt with fires and petty crime and the urban cohort street gangs and mobs, the Praetorians had extended duties including espionage, secret missions, and the upholding of the very rule of law both in and out of Rome. Within their ranks were soldiers the equal of any campaigning legionary, speculatores or scouts, and cavalry. They were led by the Praetorian prefect, Praefectus Praetorio, and at times even three Praefecti Praetorio of equestrian rank. With few exceptions, this position tended not to be open to senators, and was instead for men tried and tested in battle, or even those who had risen to the ranks from the urban cohort. And by the time of Septimius Severus, it had become administrative too, similar to a defence secretary. They needed to know the law to intervene in matters of criminal jurisdiction. Before the Castra Praetoria, the dissolution of the guard under Constantine, the Praetorian prefect was one of the most influential and powerful roles in the empire. Now the question of how effective these three forces of law and order were remains open to debate. Certainly, the Vigilis would have been effective on a day-to-day -day basis, but the rumour goes that they were bought off by Nero to allow the Great Fire of Rome to happen in 64 CE, and as the character Socia suggests, they were probably a little rough and ready with the criminals they encountered. The urban cohort's establishment was indeed followed by declining gang warfare, so on that front, one might say that they did what they were meant to do. The Praetorians are a whole other story. They well surpassed common policing, and became responsible for the rise and fall of Roman historical chapters. Were they powerful enough to stop crime? Or did they become so powerful that they themselves were the criminals? In the words of the satirist Juvenal, Quis custodiet ipsos custodes? Who will guard the guards? The only thing we know is that this question is as prevalent today as it was back then. <laughs>